At just 17 years old, former The Voice coach Miley Cyrus delivered an epic cover of one of the biggest rock songs of the 1980s, Poison's soaring breakup power ballad, Every Rose Has Its Thorn. The cover is from her third studio album, 2010's Can't Be Tamed, which she performed on her Gypsy Heart tour the following year. Watch a live performance here and listen to the studio version of Cyrus' cover below. Using a simple but potent metaphor, the song is about a cheating partner whom the singer still loves, blaming themselves for the relationship falling apart. Released in 1988, Every Rose Has Its Thorn was the band's only number one hit stateside and has since become their signature song. I was trying to capture being at that point in your relationship where it's not officially over, but it's over. Poison's lead singer Brett Michaels told Louder Sound. There I was, out on the road, getting to play music for a living, which was the Rose. But then, there was my exotic dancer back in Lay, who I was positive would never cheat on me. Or so I thought. That was the thorn. Cyrus. First concert she ever went to was to see Poison in Nashville at the Starwood Amphitheater. Michaels recalled to People. She said to me, it changed my life. She goes, that's when I knew I wanted to mix my rock, my pop, my country, and I said, I'm honored. When it came time to record Can't Be Tamed, Cyrus reached out to Michaels for his help with the Every Rose Has Its Thorn cover. Miley was incredible. We were in New York and we just started talking. She was recording and she wanted to record the song, he told people. We went down and recorded Every Rose Has Its Thorn. Miley Cyrus stood in the center of the dimly lit room, a single spotlight illuminating her figure against a backdrop of velvet curtains. Her shoulders were hunched slightly as she strummed the opening chords of Every Rose Has Its Thorn. At just 17, Miley was already no stranger to the stage. Having grown up in the limelight with a famous father and a TV show that made her a household name. But tonight was different. This wasn't Hannah Montana or the usual pop spectacle. Tonight, Miley was setting out to prove something, to herself and to everyone watching. She picked up her acoustic guitar, an old six-string with a weathered body that had seen better days, but its sound was rich and warm. She took a deep breath, closed her eyes, and let the first notes flow from her fingers. There was a murmur in the audience, fans and skeptics alike waited to see what she would do. And then, she began to sing. From the very first word, there was something unmistakably authentic in her voice. Miley's version of Every Rose Has Its Thorn, a rock ballad immortalized by Poison in the late 80s, was shockingly excellent. Her voice, raspy and raw, gave new life to the lyrics that had already meant so much to so many. She sang with a sincerity and vulnerability that seemed beyond her years, like someone who understood the song's heart as she intimately. Her delivery was not merely an echo of Brett Michaels. It was as if the words had been written for her. Covering Every Rose Has Its Thorn wasn't an obvious choice for Miley. Known for her bubblegum pop hits and tween-friendly image, the decision to take on a classic rock anthem was unexpected. The song had always been seen as a staple of 1980s hair metal, and it was hard to imagine the teenage star, often spotted in glittery costumes and neon accessories, taking it on. Yet, as she sang, it was clear why she had chosen this song. Miley's voice carried a richness and a depth that many had not heard before. She captured the melancholy of the song, her vocal lines woven with a thread of yearning and loss that felt remarkably genuine. When she sang, just like every night has its dawn, there was a maturity to her interpretation that struck a chord with the audience. It was as if the teenage star was telling her own story through this well-worn track, offering a glimpse into her world where fame had come at a price and love was always complicated. Miley Cyrus had always been full of surprises, but this was a revelation. Critics who had once dismissed her as just another pop princess were now forced to reconsider. Her rendition of the song was stripped down and soulful, showing a side of Miley that was more rock and roll than anyone had imagined. It was clear that she wasn't just dabbling in a genre she didn't understand. She had studied it, lived it, and made it her own. The way she maneuvered through the song's verses, playing with dynamics and allowing her voice to break just slightly at the edges, spoke to a young woman who was discovering her musical identity in real time. The audience, many of whom had grown up listening to Poison's version, was struck by Miley's earnestness. 
It was as if she'd had taken the psalm and painted it with her own unique colors, familiar yet strikingly new. It's no wonder that Miley was able to connect so deeply with the psalm. Behind the scenes, her life was in a constant state of flux. She had recently dealt with the very public end of a relationship and was struggling to navigate her transition from child star to adult artist. Every rose has its thorn spoke to the heartache she was experiencing, both personally and professionally. People see me one way, she would later explain in interviews, but they don't always see the whole story. This psalm, it's a way of sharing a part of me that I don't think I've shown before. Indeed, her performance was cathartic, and perhaps that's what made it so remarkable. Miley seemed to channel all the turbulence of her teenage years, her struggles with her public image, her desire to be taken seriously as an artist, and her battles with the relentless scrutiny of the media, into every note she sang. It was this blend of personal pain and artistic ambition that allowed her to transform a power ballad into something uniquely her own. As the last chord of her guitar faded into the silence, the crowd erupted into applause. It wasn't just the screams of the die-hard fans who would support her no matter what. It was genuine appreciation from an audience who had just witnessed something unexpected and extraordinary. In the days that followed, the music world buzzed with talk of Miley's cover. Critics who had been quick to label her as just another pop phenomenon began to reconsider their stance. Music blogs and publications praised her for taking a risk and stepping outside her comfort zone. Rolling Stone described her version as a surprising and shockingly excellent reinterpretation of a rock classic, noting that she had managed to both respect the original and bring something new to it. Brett Michaels himself reached out with an endorsement that meant the world to Miley. I love what Miley did with the song, he said in an interview. She took it and made it her own, which is what every artist should do. It's a beautiful thing when a song finds new life in a new voice. For Miley, the performance marked a turning point in her career. No longer was she seen solely as the star of Hannah Montana or the latest teen sensation. Instead, she was emerging as a formidable artist in her own right, capable of crossing genres and challenging expectations. Her version of Every Rose Has Its Thorn was included in her subsequent album, where it quickly became a fan favorite. The recording itself was simple, just Miley, her guitar, and a few understated strings in the background. The production didn't overwhelm her voice, it complemented it. This minimalist approach allowed her to shine in a way that her earlier, more produced tracks hadn't. For the first time, listeners could hear Miley's voice, stripped of auto-tune or studio gimmicks, laid bare in all its raw emotional power. In the months that followed, Miley began to incorporate more rock influences into her music. She was often seen wearing vintage band tees and ripped jeans, her hair loose and wild, as if visually declaring her new direction. She started collaborating with rock musicians, and her live shows took on a new, edgier vibe. It was as if covering Every Rose Has Its Thorn had unlocked a part of her she had been waiting to explore. The impact of the cover extended beyond Miley's own career. It also introduced a new generation of listeners to the music of the 1980s, reigniting interest in power ballads and rock classics. Poison's original track saw a resurgence on streaming platforms, and the band found themselves back in the spotlight, with younger fans discovering their music for the first time. By the time she performed Every Rose Has Its Thorn at an awards show later that year, the narrative around Miley Cyrus had changed completely. No longer was she just the Disney star trying to find her way in a world that often seemed intent on pigeonholing her. She had become a musical chameleon, unafraid to explore new genres and challenge herself artistically. And while the journey was far from over, one thing was clear, this was just the beginning. Miley's cover of Every Rose Has Its Thorn was not just shockingly excellent, it was the first bloom in what promised to be a long, diverse, and unexpected musical career. She had taken a song about pain and beauty coexisting and made it the anthem of her own evolution. It was a bold move and it paid off. Miley Cyrus was no longer just a pop star. She was an artist to be reckoned with, a force in the making, and she was just